Uh, my name is Evan Altinkas and I'm in the Department of History. My undergraduate uh, studies was in Turkey at the University of Dokuzeylü, uh, which is in the city of Izmir. Uh, it is very close to Greece, so I was always in interaction with uh, Greek culture during my university education, and my department was international relations. Uh, after I graduated from the university in 1998, uh, I have applied for a teaching position at the university, and I was given a teaching assistant position. I started to, to work as a teaching assistant in the same department. Then in 1999, I have um, applied for a scholarship and then I went to United Kingdom at King's College London. I had my master's education in Mediterranean studies with a British Shepherding scholarship. And in 2000, I returned to Turkey. And after I returned, I had completed two different master's degrees in two different universities, one of them in Middle Eastern Technical University, which is one of the greatest universities in Turkey in the, in the area of international relations. But then, as I kept on studying, I realized that I had to focus on the roots of international relations, so I decided to uh, apply for a master's uh, program in history. And my third master's degree was in the history of Turkish Republic from Dokuzeydet University, again, where I graduated uh, in first class. And after I completed my third master's degree, uh, they said, no, you cannot get a PhD. Three masters do not make a PhD. So I have uh, applied for a PhD program in comparative history and at the same university and in 2011 I completed, I have received my PhD degree. I, I always enjoyed reading books on history. I always tried to follow uh, new things in the area of history, new books, new publications. And as a student I always thought that uh, focusing on a specific area would make me an expert on that issue. So. Even though they were not included in the courses, in the curriculum of the lectures, I always tried to read some extra books, read some extra articles, and if possible, engage in discussions with some academics, just knocking on their door, going into their room, uh, wherever I can find them, you know, just asking them extra questions, and they were trying to get rid of me, but I always kept on going and going. I always kept their office hours in my phone, and I always followed them. So as a student, I was a very... Um, stubborn kid, to be honest with you, and I always tried to learn as much as I can from them. And finally, some of them have provided me their access information to library. One of the professors, he said, you can get more online resources now and stop bothering me and stop coming here. But that was good. Uh, in order to speak about, talk about Scholars at Risk program, first I have to explain what happened to me after yes. my PhD. After I have obtained my PhD, uh, I sought for academic positions at universities. The university where I was working at, as a teaching assistant told me that in order to become an assistant professor and start teaching, you have to wait for a couple of years. I said, well, I don't want to wait, so I want to continue teaching, because I always thought when I was at a graduate study. So then I worked at different universities at different times. Uh, three, three years at three different universities, two of them were in Turkey and one of them was in northern Cyprus, which is also a part of Turkey actually, but they keep on claiming themselves as an independent state. So, and I was in the, in the first two universities where I worked at, I always had problems with the administration because of my political views in Turkey. I was, I'm, I'm still an anti-government person, I didn't like the government in Turkey, so I was criticizing them, I was writing opinion papers, I was uh, teaching the students about how uh, this government has come to power in a historical manner in my history courses, which was allowed in the curriculum, but uh, if that, even though it was allowed in the curriculum, the aspects I had to teach about were not. So, uh, then I always started to get warnings from the university administration, and my wife was, is also an academic. She had problems, which is called mobbing, and then they even started to threaten us at the university uh, because of our ideas and lifestyle, to be honest. And after that, 
after I came back from Cyprus to Turkey, I couldn't get any job at the universities because they always kept on asking me, who do you know? It's a kind of nepotism. And I said, the only person I know is me. So, and, it, and I also advised the committees and deans and rectors to look at my CV and to understand who I am instead of asking me who I know from the bureaucracy or other parts of the government. So they kept on refusing me. The threats continued. And so I considered myself as a scholar at risk because I couldn't do any scholar work. There was only one way to survive, uh, and that was doing translations because of my language abilities. So I started to do translation from one language to another, and this was the only way to survive in, in Turkey. As an academic who had a PhD in comparative history, it was really troublesome. So I considered myself as a scholar at risk, so therefore I applied to scholar at risk program, and they evaluated my situation, they assessed it, and they said, yes, you are, and they accepted me approximately nine months ago, and after that, uh, my CV was provided to several universities, and University of Guelph, luckily was the one, uh, luckily for me, was the one that accepted me. And so, after three years of a break, I'm again able to teach, and this makes me very happy. Focus on uh, the news. They have to focus on the literature. They don't have to consider themselves, uh, you know, let's take whatever the lecturer gives us and don't discuss about it, don't look at other parts, don't look at other angles of it. So students have to stop looking like this to the book in front of them, but maybe try to look like that. This will give them a lot of chance to understand what they are being taught, especially in humanities. Uh, everything that sur surrounds us, the culture, the popular culture, the movies they watch, the music they listen, the books they read in literature, are all a result of the history and a mixture of economy or whatever the humanities offers them. So they, if they want to look at Cold War, if they want to read anything about Cold War, they have to look at the movies during the Cold War. They have to listen to the music during the Cold War. They have to read the books that were written as a novel during the Cold War. This will help them to understand that whatever they are being taught in the area of humanities is actually a part of their current life today. That their parents were affected by that, their grandparents were affected by that. So uh, they can always ask their parents about the era that they are being taught that if they, their parents or grandparents lived in that era, what they experienced. They can try to understand their lifestyles. So maybe a little bit empathy would be very good for students of humanity. This is what I want to advise to them.